Hi guys, another discussion for accounting for special transaction. This is PFRS 15 revenue recognition contracts with customers. So, and the discuss natin is the five step process and other issues regarding um, PFRS 15. This is a new standard, so hindi niyo siya makikita sa books na 2013, 2014, okay, ng advanced accounting. So, bago lang siya. So, if you be careful in using old books, okay, kasi iba yung application before, yung naabutan ko, and compared to ngayon, the new P the accounting method dictated by PFRS 15 for contracts with customers, okay, the revenue recognition, so, ito na yung gagamitin, okay, so, um, bago siyang standard, okay, hindi naman talaga bago, okay, so, you see my Anyway. Okay, so let's start. So we have the five step model framework, also co uh, um, acronym as COPAR. Okay, so we have identifying contracts with the customer, we have identifying performance obligation, we have determine transaction price, allocate transaction price, and recognize revenue when or as the entity satisfy performance obligation. So this five step model framework. You have to consider this when you are accounting for contracts. Kailan ba dapat i-recognize yung revenue? Dapat bang i-recognize yung revenue over time or at a certain point in time? Depende sa category kung saan siya papasok. Okay, there are guidelines naman wherein it can help you identify if it, the revenue will be recognized over time. Okay, so as the time goes on, okay, or at a certain point in time. Okay, so yan. So let's start with the first step. Okay, we have identifying the contracts with the customer. Okay, so ano ba yung conditions na kailangan masatisfy niya? Okay, so we have dapat approved contract by parties. Okay, then we have the right of each party in goods or services or G, G or uh, G slash s can be identified so kailangan specified yung rights then we have terms of payment in goods or services can be identified so nakalagay kung paano babayaran then we have contract has commercial substance so uh, paano ba identify yung commercial substance as we go along discussing construction contracts franchise and a lot more regarding pfrs 15 al kailan ba nagiging commercial substance siya Okay, then we have probable collection of the consideration to which entity is entitled to exchange of goods or, or services. So there's a note here, if not all the conditions are met, so you have to reassess the contract. Okay, so if reassessing is done, maaring pumatak siya sa overtime or at a certain point in time or you have to clarify certain conditions para... Uh, Ano ba talaga to? Is this vague? Is it, uh, kailangan lang specify nung parties kung ano ba? Nakalimutan lang ba nila? Or that. If all of the conditions are met, ang under siya ng scope of PFRS 15. So, you have to apply PFRS 15. That's revenue recognition. Okay, contracts with customers. Okay? So, we have step 2. Identifying performance obligations or the PO. Okay, so we have first, we have goods and services that are distinct. They are actually separate performance. So, the customer can benefit from the goods or services on its own. The entities, the entities promise to transfer goods or services can be separately identified from other promises to the customer. So, dito, separate yung performance. Kung baga, pwedeng yung isa lang. Okay, then afterwards, hindi, hindi connected yung, yung delivery ng isa doon sa isa. Okay, so separate performance on its own. It can stand on its own, okay? The other one is a series of distinct goods or services that is transferred to the customer in the same pattern of transfer to a customer. So, this is a single performance. So, so each distinct good or services in series is consecutive, conse consecutively transferred to a customer would be a performance obligation satisfied over time. So, ib ibig sabihin ito is um, consecutively, kumbaga eh, uh, there is sunod-sunod, <laughs> okay? Na it transfer yung customer. So, each of that is considered a performance obligation over time, okay? A single method of measuring progress would be used towards complete satisfaction of a performance obligation to transfer each distinct goods and services to the series. 
the series to the customer. So, ang ano dito, separate performance, it can stand on its own. Yung isa, yung single performance is actually uh, isang buo, pero utay-utay. Okay? So, ganon. <laughs> okay, next, step three. Determine the transaction price. So, presyo na. So, consider past customer business practices. So, kailangan, you have to dig dig deep. Diman? You have to uh, do background check on the on y- the your client when you're doing PFRS 15. If paano ba yung business practices nila regarding uh, the transaction price. Kasi baka meron silang trend, meron silang nakasanayan na accounting estimate na ginagamit nila, okay? which is according also to the standard. So, pag may trend na, alam mo na kung paano i-determine transaction price. Okay? So, pwede siyang an estimate of any variable consideration, okay, using either probability weighted expected value and then the most likely amount, okay, so better predicts and type. So, yeah, we have also the effect of the time value of money if there are financing components in the contract. So, alam niyo naman to, okay, with your intermediate accounting, uh, if there is financing components that are affected by the time value of money, then present value, future value, okay. Then we have the fair value of any non-cash consideration. So, as we go along the way and we apply the five-step process, so, dun yung ma, dun natin makikita yung, yung how do we do the probability weighted expected value, how do we do the most likely value. So, familiar na naman kayo in using time value of money and then the fair value of any non-cash consideration. Okay, so for the viable consideration, we distinctively differentiate the two the expected value approach this consider the sum of probability of weighted amount so familiar with the weighted amounts the probability of the weighted uh, amount so you're using percentages you're using probabilities in arriving at possible outcomes and then this is approximate estimate if the entity has a large number of contracts with similar co- characteristics okay so we have also the most likely amount only consider a single amount from the range of possible consideration it is appropriate to use this estimate if the contract has only a few possible outcomes so yung isa ginagamit kapag large uh, number of contract with similar characteristics so probabilities ang gamit the other one is kapag kakaunti lang yung contracts okay ah uh, sorry estimate if the contract has only a few possible outcomes so yun nga if Medyo kakaunti lang, yung most likely amount lang. Ano? So, discretion is advice in determining which is most likely amount. Okay? So, yun. Step 4, we have allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation. So, ito yung pagbabago sa in accounting for revenue recognition. Okay? So, before, talagang iba siya. Iba siya talaga. Okay? Ngayon, we, we allocate the transaction price to the performance obligation. Okay, so, ano ba yan? Applicable when contract has multiple performance obligation, the allocation basis may be the relative standalone selling prices, familiar. Yung may ginagawa na natin to sa intermediate accounting that we get the relative standalone selling prices and then we just um, formulate the ratio based on their relative standalone selling pricing and then we multiply it to the transaction price kung saan natin allocate okay, the basket price. Okay, if relative standalone price is not observable, the entity must estimate. So, pag walang relative standalone selling price, you either do the market value approach, okay, the adjusted market assessment approach, or the expected cost plus margin approach, the cost plus approach, and then the receivable approach, only in limited instance, okay? So, ito mga ito, may encounter natin when we discuss construction contracts, okay? So, construction contracts, franchise accounting, so, yeah, okay? Next. Step 5, last step. You have recognized revenue as the entity satisfy performance obligation. The revenue is recognized as control is passed either. So, ito, overtime. So, pag overtime, the following criteria must be met. The customer simultaneously receives, simultaneously receives and consumes all the benefits provided by the entity. The entity creates or enhances the value of asset controlled by the customer. The performance obligation does not create an asset with alternative use to the entity and the entity has an enforceable right to payment of the performance completed to date. So, these are the following criteria 
Now, when satisfied, it falls on the that the revenue should be recognized over time. Okay, one criteria met is sufficient to recognize revenue over time. Okay, so isang check mo lang dyan. Over time na agad yung re recognition ng revenue. Okay, yung over time, ma'am, as the years pass, okay, or as the periods pass. However, if none of the above criteria is present in the problem, recognize the revenue at point in that. If none, so ibig sabihin, walang, ni isa sa, ni isa sa, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, ni, ni isa sa tatlo, wala. So, at a point in time, at a specific point in time, recognize mo na agad yung revenue. Okay, so, the customer simultaneously receives and consumes. Okay. So, at point in time, so we have revenues recognized when control is passed at the point in time. It includes but not limited to the entity has a present right to payment for the asset and the customer has physical possession of the asset, accepted the asset, legal title to the asset, and significant risk and reward related to the ownership of the asset. Okay. Pag may ganyan ka, at point in time agad. Okay. Control is the ability to direct the use, of, use and obtain substantially all the remaining benefits of an asset. Possession of a thing, of things, and enjoyment of rights is a concept of an owner. Okay, so we have, uh, you have encountered this in your law. Kung kailan ba, um, there is control, okay, if there's ownership, okay, so yan. So, yeah, we were how to determine passage of control to customers, so we have, a guide here so does the customer simultaneously receive if yes over time okay if no tingnan mo kung magsasatisfy niya yung pangalawang criteria does the entity performance creates or enhances an asset that the custom customer controls as asset is created or enhanced if yes over time if no does the entity's performance not create an asset with an alternative use to the entity and the entity has an enforceable right okay so if yes over time if no Recognize revenue at point in time. If lahat ay no, recognize revenue at a point in time. If ma lin man jan ay yes, over time siya. Okay? So, I think, yeah, may example tayo here. So, on April 20, 2020, XYZ, company entered to contract to deliver product BB and CC to Mr. Arson for 200000 The contract requires that the product BB to be delivered first and states the payment for the delivery of product BB is conditional on the delivery of product CC. Okay, so, kailangan daw i-deliver yung product BB muna bago i-deliver yung product CC. Okay, the relative standalone selling prices of product BB and CC are 40,000 and 6,000 respectively. The consideration of 200,000 is due only after the entity has transferred both products BB and CC. Ooh, para may condition. Gusto niya ulit ng basa. Anyway. So, step one, identifying contracts with the customer. So, una, is it approved, approved contract by parties? So, yes. The contract is to deliver or sale of products BB and CC. So, right of each party. So, ang right, Mr. Orison has rights to receive products BB and CC. Terms of payment, payment in full, due only after XYZ transferred both products BB and CC. So, saka lang magbabayad kapag parehas na na-deliver. Okay? Contract has commercial substance. Yes, because the delivery by XYZ of products BB and CC results in the payment of the contract price. Okay, so, mahalagang mangyari yung delivery kasi kapag hindi, walang bayad. Okay? Then, probable collection of the consideration in which entity is entitled to in exchange. Yes, there's probability of collection of consideration which is after delivery of both products, BB and CC. So, that's how you do the identifying contracts with the customer. Now, we identify the PO. Okay? Ano ba yung PO? The PO is the promise to deliver products BB and CC by XYZ. So, yun yung performance obligations. There is a series of performance obligations in this case. Kasi dependent yung pag-deliver ni product CC sa delivery ni product BB. Pag hindi nangyari yung product, yung delivery ng product BB, walang mangyayaring delivery ng product CC. Hindi pwedeng mauna si product CC kasi sabi, uh, it must be delivered after product BB is delivered. Okay? Ay, paano pag walang, di, hindi din deliver si product BB, eh, hindi, hindi madideliver si product CC, ay eh, di walang bayarong mangyayari. Okay? So, ganun. So, yun yung performance obligation. Promise to deliver 
products BB and CC. Now, we determine transaction price. So, alam, magkano ba yung transaction price? Nakalagay naman. 200,000 is clearly determinable in this case. Okay? So, you have to allocate it. Sabi nga kanina sa step 4, allocate the transaction price either using the relative standalone selling price and in Ifola, you can use the market value approach, the, the cost plus approach, and then the expected value if pero less daw yung cases. Okay? So, we have the transaction price of 200,000 shall be allocated. So, we have Ano ba yung relative standalone selling prices ni BB at ni CC? Si BB is 40,000. Si CC is 60,000. So, how do we do that? 40,000 plus 60,000, you have 100,000. So, how do you get 40%? 40,000 divided by 100,000 is 40%. So, 60% kay product CC, 60,000 divided by 100,000 is 60%. Okay? Then, you now use the ratios to allocate the 200,000. So, 200,000 times 40% K product BB is 80,000. Then, 200,000 times 60% product CC is 120,000. That's the transaction price. Okay? Now, we recognize the revenue. Ang tanong, kailan ba siya i-recognize? Kasi, is it over time or at a point in time? The revenue is recognized at a point in time. Bakit? Tingnan natin. Since the customer, Mr. Orison, has physical possession of an asset due to the acceptance of assets delivered and that XYZ has the present right to payment for the delivery of assets, there is passing of control at point in time. Hence, revenue shall be recognized. Okay, so, uh, si customer daw, si Mr. Orison, ay... Tawag gini? Mm-hmm. I my physical possession of asset due to the acceptance of the asset delivered gift okay, deliver. <laughs> okay, and that the XYC has a present right to payment for the delivery of assets. Okay, so there is passing of control at the point in time. So yun nga. So a recog a revenue recognition nga is a point in time. So is hindi mo siya na siya kailangan at a certain point in time. At, at over time ang recognition. Okay, kasi um Ken, tingnan natin yung, ano, yung mga criteria for judging. So, lock natin ito. Halik ko may padating. So, we have, does a customer simultaneously receive and consume the benefits provided by the entity's performance? No. Okay. Does the entity performance create or enhances an asset that the customer controls? Saan ba niya gagamitin? Parang i-consume lang naman niya. Okay. Pero hindi simultaneously niya i-consume. Diba? Okay. So, no. Wala namang i-enhance na asset. Okay? Then, does entity's performance not create an asset with alternative use to the entity and the entity has an enforceable right to payment mm, for the performance completed to date? Mm, no. Okay? Kaya pumatak siya sa revenue recog rev recognized revenue at point in time. Okay? So, this is just a short discussion kasi this is just an introduction of PFRS 15 kasi marami tayong topics covered by PFRS 15. Okay, iba't ibang klase siya ng how do we recognize revenue when we're doing when we're dealing with construction? How do we recognize revenue if we are a fran we are in a franchisee franchise or relationship? Okay? So, and more of those. Okay? So, we see you when I see you. There's no guided exercises for this kasi papatak siya sa yung mga specific lessons. Okay? So, bye guys.